I know Christians in this corner who believe that I'm Roman Catholic. I've never said I'm Roman Catholic. I've said that I'm not Roman Catholic and there are still Christians who think that I am. Well, they didn't get that information from me. So where did they get it from? Gossip. So my next topic is just to talk about the exploration of a Christian culture. Because you've all heard me say that Christians are a people, that we have a history, the history of the church, that we have values, the Christian value system, that we have doctrines, the Christian doctrinal system. Well, these kinds of doctrines and values lead to the emergence of a Christian culture, of a Christian identity. And I just want to talk about some of the abuses that I as a Christian have observed in Christian fellowships. And I want to challenge those abuses. One of the first abuses that I've seen in churches is the practice of reserving seats in the fellowship for your friends. You make a mockery of what the teachers of the faith teach. In James chapter 2, we read in verse 3, it says, For if a man comes into your assembly with a gold ring and dressed in fine clothes, and there also comes in a poor man in dirty clothes, and you pay special attention to the one who is wearing fine clothes, and say, you sit here in a good place, and you say to the poor man, you stand over there, or may not sit down, or may sit at my footstool, have you not made distinctions amongst yourselves and become judges with evil motives? It is an abuse of the fellowship to reserve churches for your friends and family. The church is a family. We are brothers and sisters. When you reserve seats in your fellowship for your friends, you're abusing the unity and the love of the brotherhood. Improve your discipleship. Be a better Christian. In 1 Timothy 2, 9 to 10, we read this. Likewise, I want women to adorn themselves with proper clothing, modestly and discreetly, not with braided hair, gold or pearls, or costly garments, but rather by means of good works, as is proper for a woman making a claim to godliness. When you come into a church dressed in a mini skirt with a top that's showing your boobs and your midriff, you're not dressing modestly. The very point of those clothes is to draw attention to yourself. The mini skirt was created by a designer who said in her words she created the skirt so that women could more readily access sex at lunchtime, that she could go for a quickie. That's the purpose of the mini skirt. You have to analyse the clothes that you wear to see your purpose. If you're going in finest regalia to draw attention of yourself, to make a display of your riches, you have failed. We Christians are to be known by the good works that we live, by our humbleness, our modesty, our fidelity, our faithfulness, our honesty, our moral uprightness, our dedication to truth. Let us be known for these things. Those churches like Spec Nation or Spock Nation that made a fashion of being a gangster and having the flash cars. You have failed in your discipleship. As Christians, let us be known for our modesty, our humbleness. There are many Christians in the Middle East that could teach Christians in the West how to dress appropriately. 
There are many Christians in India who could teach Christians in Europe how to dress modestly. There are many Christians in Eastern Europe who could teach Western Christians how to dress modestly. There are many Arab Christians who could teach Christians in Western Europe how to dress modestly. Dressing modestly is not abandoning our Christianity. Dressing modestly and acting modestly is embracing our Christianity. <laughs> Furthermore, James chapter 1, verses 26, if we go there. If anyone thinks himself to be religious and yet does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is worthless. There are too many Christians gossiping about other Christians in our fellowships. Every time you allow your itching ears to listen to a bit of unsubstantiated gossip about another Christian, you have failed in your discipleship. I know Christians in this corner who believe that I'm Roman Catholic. I've never said I'm Roman Catholic. I've said that I'm not Roman Catholic and there are still Christians who think that I am. Well, they didn't get that information from me. So where did they get it from? Gossip. Gossip is where they got it from. Christians don't pay heed to gossip. Now, there is some important things that we have to be aware of when it comes to this idea of gossip. If someone, if you see someone do something dangerous that may harm someone else in the fellowship, go to the proper authorities in the church and bring it to their attention. That is not gossip. Gossip is idle, spurious, unsubstantiated, fictitious, myth-making, lying about other people, or even telling the truth about other people in business that is not your own and does not concern anyone else. That's gossip. Stay clear of it. If someone in your fellowship is gossiping, just shut the conversation down. Talk about something more edifying, more uplifting, more orthodox, that draws people to the truth, that beautifies our Lord. Don't gossip. If you allow gossip, you are failing in your churches. In Matthew 12, verses 46 to 50, our Lord is teaching a group of his disciples and then he's interrupted and he's told that his mother and his brothers and sisters are outside and he says, who are my mother and who are my brothers and sisters? And pointing to his disciples, he says, these are my mother and my brothers and sisters, those who do the will of my father. So your Lord has said that you are a family. So understand yourselves as a family. If you're meeting a Christian who is of a similar age to you, a similar place in life, call them a brother or a sister, a cousin. If someone is older than you, don't call them a brother. Think of them as an uncle or an auntie. If someone or us, if they're very close to you in a spiritual sense, think of them as a father or as a mother. If you are someone who's growing someone in their Christian faith, a young disciple that you're helping, think of them like your son or your daughter, if their closeness is enough. It isn't a case that all families get along. Sometimes families can't get along. There are uncles that you don't get along with, but that doesn't mean you start saying that they're not your family. You just maybe don't relate to them as much or as closely, but you show them respect. And when they're in trouble, you pull together like a family does. This is how we should be thinking. Some Christians we will form close relationships to, and they are to us like a mother or a father or a brother or a sister or a son or daughter. Some we only know in passing, 
in which case they're more like a second cousin or a third cousin removed that we meet once in a while at a family gathering. But have the appropriate decorum amongst yourselves as Christians, as a family. So, in John 14, 27, when our Lord greets his disciples, he says, peace be with you. Well, I would encourage you, brothers and sisters, if you are Christians, stop greeting one another with that ridiculous, secular hello, hi. We are a community of faith. Let us greet one another in the way of our Lord and share the peace with one another. That peace that we have been given by Christ, that peace which is our inheritance, and that peace, when we share it with another believer, is a blessing upon them. Surely that is a better way to greet one another as Christians, to share the peace. And what a witness, because it demonstrates the unity of the brotherhood of the faith. It demonstrates the unity of the church, and it is a witness to all those around us that we Christians love, honour and respect one another. And it is that love and honour and respect that will convince the world that our Lord was sent by the Father. So Christians, improve your discipleship. Any questions before I finish? Okay, then thank you very much for listening. I'm going to take a break. Then I've got another talk to do. But for now, I'm just going to rest my voice. So God bless you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be strong in him. Stand firm in the faith. Stand firm for the church. Glory to God. Yeah. Perfect.